So I sit down to my computer, my podcast studio, to record the ad for joeshrimshack.com like I do every week. And next to me, right in the studio, is a 75-gallon aquarium with a pair of Siamese algae eaters. And they're not known to breed in captivity, but here they are breeding. So I unfortunately have a deadline of getting this advertisement out, but I must not interrupt what's going on, the magic in my tank. So please go to joeshrimpshack.com, use promo code AquariumGuys at checkout for 15% off your ad, and put in the notes when you uh, purchase anything in the store for 15% off that uh, SAE or Siamese algae eaters do breed in captivity. joeshrimpshack.com. I hope it gets you in the mood. One last thing before I let you go. Don't forget that we have the last week of J4 and Flowerhorns competition left running. Go to the link in the website. Sign up for your free champion Flowerhorn. Or we're going to pick someone out of the uh, out of the pool. And also, Reef Flower and Cobalt Aquatics got together, and they're doing an aquascaping competition. Certainly go to the link there to sign up for great prizes for Reef Flower and Cobalt Aquatics products. You can also use promo code Aquarium Guys at J4, Cobalt Aquatics, and Reef Flower stores for percentages off. Certainly go check them out. Let's quietly kick that podcast. Welcome to the Aquarium Guys podcast with your hosts, Jim Colby and Rob Zolson. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. This week, we, uh, we're, we're, we're in one of those positions where if you're a content creator and you try to do something with a schedule, especially when you have a community that you want to watch things live, you can't keep moving things back. But unfortunately, our guest was unable to join us because his PR guy uh, didn't really get to connect with uh, the CEO who was the guest and tell him that his he needed his computer. That would be important. That's important. So um, this is part of the day-to-day doings of a content creator. So Jimmy's decided to crack open a couple extra beers, and we decided to reach into our silly cabinet of ideas and uh, die for a podcast. Now, we have uh, some friends that we reach out to because, again, our community for the Aquarium Guys podcast, we have a Discord. That's where our fan page is. It's where you can ask questions, get help. It's a big community. Come join it. Go to AquariumGuysPodcast.com. Bottom of the website, you can find the uh, the link. It's also, up. it's also an escort service. Uh, yeah, you can escort yourself some fish in the marketplace there, Jimmy. Oh, that wasn't where I was going. Damn. Um. So certainly join up, but uh, we have uh, some friends in another Discord, and they call themselves the Community Tank, and they have a lot of fun. It's essentially a bunch of longtime fish keepers trying to help and make a community bonding around fish like any other good community. Um, I have a fondness in my heart for these people because along with fish, they also have a great sense of humor, sometimes uh, a bit of too much sense of humor. If you guys want to know more, certainly go to thecommunitytank.com and you'll find they have a podcast they do every once in a while. And it's literally a bunch of fish friends talking about the hobby together. Certainly uh, check it out. But uh, I'll introduce their leader, Oscar. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rob. Uh, great to be here. Long time listener, first time guest. Happy to have you on, man. This is his first time with us. Oh, no. We'll go gentle. <laughs> Don't worry. I heard there's TCT lube that you can use. There so. you go. Well, we'll send a bottle to you to your studio. Compliments Thank of you. Uh, the guests. Compliments of the guys. <laughs> uh, I brought with me um, my good mate May. May um, works with the CIA. He does sciencey stuff. He's a great dude. Used to work at a fish store. Ask him about a dwarf shrimp maze. Spiritual is the world famous owner of the trash taupe. Yeah. Like, it's a tank with trash in it. I don't know, like, what else you could want. Then Underscore, Underscore used to work at a fish, or he does work at a fish store. He does crazy swamp topes and weird plant setups. And Wonderful. then there's me. So if I could get, uh, just so I have voice recognition, uh, Spiritual, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. May, thanks again for, for joining the debauchery, sir. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Underscore, it's always a pleasure. Good to be here. Oh, almost lost him on that one, but we—he's—he's he's here. I swear it. What we wanted to talk about this week is funny. Uh, what we call topes. We now that that word's based off of biotope. Biotope is a recreation of some sort of environment 
that normally means a natural environment. But what we want to talk about is some funny decor. Now, us as uh, long-term hobbyists, you know, we try to get the fundamentals down to new people. So this isn't necessarily for the new listeners, although you're going to hear some hilarious stories on uh, silly things we've done to our aquarium that you should or should not do. So take none of this episode's advice to heart besides the first section, which we're going to answer your questions like we do every week, Jimmy. Cool. I'm excited. I've got news. Do you have news? Well, first, who are you? I'm your host, Rob Zolz. <laughs> I'm Jim Colby. And I'm Adam Eldershar. What, you got jello in your underwear again? What's so damn funny over there? I'm listening to you. <laughs> oh, God. Jello in the underwear. Oh, have you ever done that? I suggest that you warm it up a little bit before you put it in your underwear, but I'd like to put jello in my underwear when I go to work. It just makes things so much more fun at work. I just feel like that brings you a lot closer to uh, your, your favorite comedian, Bill Cosby. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we're not gonna go there jello, he had jello. the roofies <laughs> jim's talking about the- jello unless you roofied the jello robs you could roofie the jello you, you never know you really never know this uh week we got a couple hard questions now <laughs> can we forward them to somebody who might know this? honestly though um a couple of these are uh detailed and this is a question that We've been trying to dodge the bullet on, but honestly, we're the aquarium guys, and we don't let any questions slip a, so far away <laughs> of controversy. So let me read it. Is it. Why are you two jerks so fat? All right. So Is that what it was? No. Well, uh, for this gentleman's uh, identity, we're going to call him just by his first name, Andre. But if you would like, would you like to read this one, Jimmy? Normally, I read them. Is it Andre the Giant? Uh, Andre the Good-Looking Man. Oh. Maybe. He goes, hey, guys. First of all, thanks for the show. As a new reefer, I've been learning a lot from all of you. So unfortunately, one month ago, I had an odinium. What? What is that? Um, odinium? I had to look it up. It's a parasite for uh, marine tanks. I had a parasite for marine tanks called odium. <laughs> spread on my nano reef tank that killed five of my six fishes. I'm new to the hobby. So when I started treating my fish with copper, then my LFS went... Let me, it was too late to save them. Went, 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 I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Why did the, L, his local fish store gave him copper for a nano reef? That guy's a they, fluke and idiot. Fluke. Not, not the, the owner of the store. Well, you I don't know, know if it was a reef. We, we don't, we don't know the, the, the circumstances. It could have been a new guy. We don't know, but let's just uh, give the benefit of the doubt here. Now, it's a nano reef tank. I did everything right since buying a hospital tank to the medication and I was heartbroken. Then I decided that I would buy my own medicine so this never happens again and I can strike as quick as possible when I see a white spot. I was speaking on the phone with a guy from an online fish store in Portugal that had a coral that I loved and asked him, hey, do you have any medicine that really effective against odium and parasites? And he said to me, yeah, I got this one, Ixshield from New Life Spectrum that's super effective. It's having a big demand nowadays because of the coronavirus, something that has some active principles of the medicine that fights malaria and other viruses, the one that Trump and Balanon. <laughs> it's the one that Trump took to cure himself. So I've been selling it like crazy in the USA. So have you guys heard anything about this? It's true. Okay, so to give you more background on this, the uh, o- odium, all right, I'm not a uh, marine expert by any measure but i've heard of this but before. you are a meth addict they, they call it gold dust or He'd pepper a skin if he was a meth addict yeah you would be i, I trust me fattest meth addict of all time um but anyways this odium they call it uh gold dust or pepper spot it's to my knowledge and again i'm not the expert on this similar to kind of like an ick where you see it develop on the outside of the fish. This is for marine fish. Now. And again, it's it's treated the same way as any other parasitic treatments using traditional things like methylene blue, copper, shit like that, right? So that's why he's saying that this, you know, ick shield works so well. Now, I did try to look up the information on this product for New Life, Spe- uh, New Life Spectrum ick shield powder bath solution that he was uh, putting up. And of course, like any other medication out there with their own, quote, proprietary recipe, there's not a whole lot listed that I can confirm as ingredients. However, the medication that they're talking about being this, quote unquote, medication they're using to treat the coronavirus and that was talked about by Trump and others is chloroquine. Chloroquine is a immunosuppressive drug used to treat and prevent malaria in third world countries that has quite a bit of effect 
and mainly used for those purposes, but in the aquarium world is used as a um, anti-parasitic. So we do not recommend people using fish medicine. If you have malaria, I would suggest you either go to the doctor or go buy some beer. Well, one of the two. The idea uh, I would recommend the doctor. Oh, the the idea with this is in the early stages of COVID, when they're trying to test things and they still have no idea what's going on, they were using a mixture of chloroquine, certain antibiotics, uh, such as your common z pack that they treat for sinus infections, and they would try to blast it, hopefully using the immunosuppressive abilities of the drug to try to treat extreme uh, COVID patients. Now, is this still happening? I'm not a doctor. Contact them. I know that all manufacturers using chloroquine were basically uh, stopped in the United States because they needed to reserve the drug for doctor purposes. Now, as a fish expert, like Jimmy said, never take fish medication. Um, I'm one person that grew up really poor. My mother decided as a child to feed me fish medication, and I was that lucky that I didn't get a, Did a, really? a, a, enough brain damage. And, and and that explains a lot why you're being breastfed as a cow. Right. And the cow kicked you in the head. And the cow kicked me in the head. Yeah. Um, the reason being is not because they use different drugs uh, than other places. Veterinarians use some of the same drugs that you know, some humans need to take. But if it's made for veterinarian purposes, it is not quality controlled to near the same thing as a human. So you might be getting bad drugs, dirty drugs, who knows what else, because it's not intended for human consumption. The consistency is not there. I mean, you could have uh, a 200 milligram versus a 250 versus a three. And easily kill you in some circumstances. Correct. And remember the, maybe it was in the 80s, I'm believing, the scandal of how they had to put seals on Tylenol bottles. What? I think it was in the 80s. Yes, uh, I lived through that. I say you should you should know this better than I. I lived through that. Uh, Somebody took on the t uh, shelf just at a local pharmacy. They got Tylenol. There was no seal as there is today on these bottles. They would open it up. Someone would put something terrible inside of it, and then they'd sell the ibu or the Tylenol or ibuprofen to the public. It was essentially a way to put anthrax and terrible shit in bottles. It was probably you know terrorism, you know, in its infancy. And I can't remember exactly what happened. We should look it up. But in, people would buy Tylenol off the shelf in their grocery store. And what this person was doing, they would grab, a, you know, they'd buy Tylenol or grab it off the shelf, take it home and put in uh, poison. So here's the information. And people take it home and die. In 1982, Tylenol, um, the, the, how the Tylenol murders, they actually have a name for this, Tylenol murders. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them. So the morning of September 29th, tragical medical mystery became a sore throat, runny nose on people, 12-year-old girl, um, suburb of Chicago, and they found out that they essentially laced the pills with some shit. So now if you have bottles, they either have aluminum seals or plastic seals, and if the seal's broken, they cannot even sell it. FDA regulations state that that has to be sent back to the manufacturer for destruction for people's human uh, safety, and that's just from people tampering with it, but also if it's not sealed, moisture, fungus, there's a lot of stuff that can happen if you do not have sealed medication. So never take pet medication because in most circumstances, and even if they do seal it, you don't know when it was sealed and how, it is unregulated for human consumption. It's a huge risk. And, and don't do it. The word tamper resistant never was around until after the Tylenol murders. And, you know, those seals were put on there to stop people like this that did this. And uh, so, yeah, it was back in the 80s. I remember being quite young, but I do remember this happening. And a lot of people died and a lot of people were freaked out about it. So kind of reminds me a little bit of that one uh, Batman movie where everybody in Gotham City was, remember that? Poisoned by the water. Poisoned by the water. And, and, and they didn't know if it was from the makeup or the deodorant. And it was pretty crazy. So to finish the email from uh, this this gentleman, we have, uh, have you guys ever heard of this? Is it true? Is medication, uh, because doc, uh, medicine doctor fees in the U.S., we also have free medical assistance so people don't need to take stuff made for fish here. Uh, good for you. We're jealous. You know, um, we have debates on what we do for our medical stuff in the United States. But yes, that's exactly what it was. The um, government was holding chloroquine and medications like it in case there was a discovery during the emergence of COVID-19. 
So, uh, always hope you continue doing an amazing job and reach people everywhere. Stay safe. Well, thank you for that uh, question. Not exactly the favorite question we like to ask on the, or answer on the podcast, but we're not afraid to take things right on the head. We're going to be, be truthful, and we're not making any recommendations on how to treat anything besides fish diseases, and even then, consult your veterinarian. We did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so we are not doctors. We are not doctors. This is... This is actually a little bit funny because just yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine who works in a lab that was working on some of these clinical uh, trials involved with hydroxychloroquine. We, uh, we, I'm in the ecology lab on the other side, and he does the actual science. Um, and what he was saying about hydroxychloroquine is that it was generally recommended by a single Dr. Zelenko. Dr. Zev Zelenko was the name. And it started to be recognized as not particularly useful in COVID treatment once they started doing long-term clinical trials. But because it was already accepted for use on malaria, it kind of got pushed really quickly and it kind of became a bureaucratic nightmare. And we ended up having um, the president push it a little too quickly. And most of the recent studies are showing it's having very little effect on treating COVID. And more than that, actually, it's been linked with heart rhythm um, abnormalities. But that those are very recent studies, and there hasn't been enough trial to for us to suggest that that's a worry. But yeah, that's, that's what I know about hydroxychloroquine. Well, we appreciate that. So next question we got in the hopper is from a prior uh, fan that messaged before called LJ. LJ says, hello again. I have another question about clear aquarium sealant. When fishing, I often see nice driftwood and roots, and probably not a, um, but they're probably not aquarium safe. So I wonder, is there such a clear sealant or spray that I can spray the wood, place it in the tank, and I'm sure it would not rot inside? Thanks for all the entertainment, LJ. I don't know of anything that you'd want to do to these other than dry them out and uh, put them in your tank because all this driftwood that you find was in the lake at one time or out in the woods at one time. And uh, I would just take, if you want, if you find some nice driftwood and there's a lot of it out there, if you take that home and you dry that out in the sun, I think you'll have uh, great success with it. Um, a lot of driftwood, if it's been in the lake or the river for a long time, all the tannins will pretty much be out of it. But if you find a, a fresh piece of stuff, it may tan up your tank really, really uh, dark, but um, I don't see any problem. And I don't know why you'd want to, to try to seal it. Um, any type of chemical used to, to seal it, which I'm sure you can, it will eventually leach into the water. Well, that and, I mean, think about taking just that piece of wood on itself with no oxygen and put it in a sealed thing. It's going to fester. It's, it's going to become a, a toxin bomb for whatever you do seal it and it cracks open and starts leaking it's, you know, sealed goo. I don't know if you've ever taken, like, liquid turd and put it in a jar and put it in the <laughs> sun. Guess, what, what was that? Have you ever taken, like, a liquid, you know, just taken, like, liquid crap, put it in a jar, put it in the sun? You know, it'll make all different types of molds and, and goodies. So, essentially, you're doing that with a log. It, it needs to breathe. It needs to, you know, oxidize and release its, all its uh, toxins. Uh, don't seal it. You're, you're just creating a problem. The same with the sand. Like, if you have a, some stuff that gets, you know, anaerobic in the sand, it can't release and then eventually it creates a gas bubble, and when it releases, it's toxic to your tank. It just burps. That's You're doing that with a log, not not kosher. Now, if you had something else that isn't naturally decaying, like a piece of wood or root, and say you had something plastic that you wanted to put in and you wanted to be safe, which we're going to talk about a lot in this episode. Plastic? So we're going to talk about <laughs> random objects that were never intended to put in an aquarium. Um, what I'd recommend is, uh, number one, check the type of plastic. Um, see if it's uh, children safe and how it leaches in the water. There's a lot of different types of plastics out there and chemicals that they use. Generally, if it's children safe, it's probably half safe for your aquarium. And when I say children safe, like below age two and under, like Fisher Price safe, because they're going to put that stuff in their mouth and that's how they rate those toys. Now, if you have something that's questionable, what I use for 3D printing is a silicone conform uh, sealer. Um, I get it on Amazon. It's a spray stuff. It's, I think, 100% silicone. And it sprays on... Uh, I'm actually looking at my my Amazon purchases right now. 
And it sprays on really nice because when you 3D print an object, it has that rough edge still because it's layer upon layer of plastic. So when you're making, let's say, things that touch your skin, like a personal toy, Jimmy, you don't want that rubbing. You spray it with the coating. You let it. That's disturbing that you're making that type of stuff down in your basement. I mean, what I'm other still disturbed have that you have for it? I'm still disturbed that he keeps jars of liquid shit around. I know. Oh, as a kid, like. No, we don't want to know. No, no, no. I don't need to know anymore. <laughs> oh, too bad. You're going to get it. As a kid, like the amount of like weird ass science projects I would do. No, 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 that's not a science project. That's just that's like an episode of creeping, creepy hoarders where you store <laughs> liquid shit in a jar and that's, watch it fester. You got a piece in a in a in a Mountain Dew bottle and keeps it. OK, OK, here's the story, y'all. Oh, we don't you're, you're going to get this now. I'm going to go to the bathroom. So when I was a kid. Um, I just discovered that bread molds and I thought the mold was cool looking. It's blue. It has fuzzy things. It's like a damn alien planet growing off the bread. And my mom threw it out. I'm like, what is that? It's mold. I'm like, how does that happen? Well, there's moisture in it and it sits in too long and it goes bad. Moisture it sits too long. Hmm. So then I would add moisture to about any, you know, natural object and put it in a jar outside. I only do like one jar at a time, mind you. So I grab like leaf litter, see how long it takes to grow mold. There's a little water in there. I grab like with a tong, piece of dog crap, put a little water in there, see what it molds. And every object I put in there made a different type of mold. I was fascinated, had no idea what I was doing. But, you know, as a you know six, seven year old kid, that shit's fascinating. I wonder what kind of mold this podcast would grow. I'm just wondering. <laughs> Take your iPod, put a little water in it, put it in a jar. Exactly. Maybe that's why I like it. So is there probably that toxic slime mold that Robbie met with at Walmart. Yeah, I don't think I ever updated people with that that mold. So on was it story time one? We talked about a orange moving slime fungus type stuff in the Walmart aquariums and uh found what, out it's was called... that their goldfish? <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> it's called dog vomit uh slime or dog dog vomit fungus, and it literally does move. That's a scientific name. Uh, that is the common name. I'm not. I mean, okay. you, you Google it, honestly. But uh, yeah, we had confirmed. We had some listeners uh, message in, literally giving me pictures and examples. Is it this one? I'm like, holy shit! It's literally that one. There's videos of it moving. Yeah, I wasn't going crazy. Yeah, I went crazy after I digested the slime mold. Yeah. But anywho, so that's all you got. Enough about me. Don't seal your uh, driftwood roots and natural shit. That's beautiful. Unless, I- is there any examples that TCT has to offer? Um, well, the first thing I'd say is that, um, if I ever come up and visit you guys, I can bring you slime mold because I have a ton of it. Oh my God. Um, yes. It's <laughs> pass. I have, t- I have enough for everyone. Put it in a jar and we'll, we'll hang out. Second, I definitely am 100% with you before. If I'm trying to add a piece of driftwood to my tank, I'll leave it to dry out in the sun for a little while and then I'll just add it. I'm not going to coat it in anything. I'm a firm oh, yeah, believer we didn't, that we didn't tell him what to do. We just told him what not to do. How dare us? I told him to put it on the sun and dry it. Well, I'm I'm a fan yeah. that I go a step further. If the log is within reason and I can fit it in one of those giant like pots, I'll boil the shit out of it. What about the microwave? I'm not a microwave man, but I have baked some wood. Yeah. That's that's like a fire hazard. I've had people put it in in, uh, in the oven if it's a small piece and, and try to roast it a little bit, but I think the sun's probably the safest because at least your house won't burn down. Just hey, yeah, I, I've only done sun. I won't bake or boil a log. I'll do that sometimes with rocks. Well, I'll bake rocks. I won't boil rocks. Don't boil rocks. But um, yeah, I, I don't think you need to do anything fancier than that. Although I did know one guy who stuck it in a giant, like he filled a garbage can with water and then he just poured in bleach and then he threw in all of his logs. And um, he attempted to put that in an aquarium, but um, very poor idea. Uh, very poor idea. Uh, he didn't have anything in there, but the plants died. Like, he, there was no fish in there, but, like, straight up, the plants started dying after he did that. Yeah, if you pour bleach in a tank, normally most of the bleach after 24 hours will evaporate. You still have to do water changes and whatnot. But when you have something porous like a, a log you can pretty much uh, guarantee that it's sucking up that bleach and it's just going to be pissing that out for the remainder of its life. But, you know, I I heard you say something interesting, and and I know why. Tell people why you don't boil rocks. There can be air pockets inside of those rocks, and they can go off like a grenade. 
Yes, they like, can. I also knew a guy who did that. Uh, this British dude who said he was going to go boil rocks and naturally everyone I knew told him on the group chat, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Uh, he had closed the group chat and then an hour later he said, I smashed a hole in my window because a rock exploded. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a quick quick story. We were 16, 17, 18 years old down at the lake and we were going to have a little campfire. So we grabbed a whole bunch of the bigger rocks that were out in the lake that have been soaking in water forever. Oh no! And yeah, we started having grenades go off about 10 o'clock after about 100 <laughs> beers and people were diving behind trees, man. It was a lot of fun. And, a, a, and even a small rock really hurts when it's hot and it hits alongside the head. Wait, is that like uh, the campfire was Davy and you're the drunk Goliath? Yeah, that's that's exactly why I am the way I am. I took one along the head. You took one along the head. Wow. Well, uh, don't uh, use wet rocks for your campfire, everyone. So there you go. You learned one good thing tonight on the Grim Guys podcast. All right, let's do the last question. We got Peter, the sunfish guy. I love Peter. Peter, you are now an in-house favorite. Uh, thank you for that last story. But he said, just listen to one of the latest episodes at work. Heard something about tumors on weather loaches. Have you had dried or crushed coral in your tank? Because this can cause tumors on them. This is from my experience. Peter, the sunfish guy. So I spoke about one of my oldest penis fish, the dojo loach, the weather loach. And this one was stunted and it had a side bulge on the side of its body. Many years. I thought and it was just happy to see me. It clearly. No, it, was a, it was side bulge. Not, oh, side bulge. Not, not symmetrical in the center, Jimmy. I think it was a tumor. I haven't had it anything but sand. And yes, uh, they people say that they can swallow sand, but weather loaches in their natural environments and for years that I've kept them sift sand very well. In fact, they purposely bury themselves in sand. They dig through it very, very well. They, they sift it with their gills. So it would be very surprising if they swallowed the sand. I have had nothing but sand with that particular loach since I've had it. Um, I'm very convinced it's a tumor, but even if it was, I have to treat it the same way. If it's something he ate or a tumor is that I really can't do anything for him and just give him the best life possible. In situations where you see him and you're a breeder, that's the definition of something that should be culled so people don't have to struggle and uh, be wary of the hobby. They can have a fish that's not uh, dealing with that. But I was a rescue. He was um, at least uh, halfway grown by the time I got him and uh, rest in peace, <laughs> my wee little penis. <laughs> not his actual penis, right? The fish. Yes, not he my. He hasn't seen his penis. actual one in years. Oh, <laughs> point Adam. Point Adam. So that's all the questions we got today. Uh, that we got others, but I feel like we should talk with our guests. Well, I, I have one thing. Please, I, I've got. You know, you always ask, "Do you have something?" And I, I've got some bad news, and then I've got some good news, and I've got some even worse news. Well, hit me with all of it. Well, you know how we made fun of murder hornets. Yes, uh, just, that was a fun thing to make fun just, of. Just because it's fun to say murder hornets. Well, uh, just for those that are listening, in case you're as clueless as I was, apparently there was some sort of like hybrid Africanized honeybee bullshit that was starting to c across. No, no, no murder Asia. hornets come from Asia. Asia. Was it, or was it Asia? I thought it was like murder African honeybees crossed with Asian bees. No, no that's, that's, a that's movie. separate. That's the movie you saw. Oh, somewhere. well, regardless. So, so murder hornets are a two-inch hornet that are not in the United States until just recently. They kill between 50 people on average each in China and Japan. So murder hornets are, are a thing, but what they murder, what they're really known for, other than murdering a few people, 50 people per year in these countries, they will go in and decapitate all the bees, honeybees, in a hive. Oh, I thought you were going to say that they kill uh, Jerry Seinfeld's career B movie. Oh, that's funny. So anyway, the bad news is they found murder hornets now in Washington state. Okay. And, and, but here's the good news. They captured a couple of them. They are about two inches long. They've got big uh, scissors on the front of their, where their mouth is. And they actually go in and they cut all the heads off honeybees. And we need the honeybees around to pollinate everything. So it's very important we have honeybees. So they're, they're trying to track down these, these, these murder hornets. And here's, so bad news, we have murder hornets. Good news is they caught two of them, and they put a little radio frequency antenna on them, and they traced them back to their nest. And they found the nest on private property in I, Washington I, State. I feel like this whole thing is like this like plot to a movie. Like, we're going to get like Lake Placid, but the B version. 
Yeah, no, this is just actual, this is actual facts. I'm just telling you. Right. I want you to know about murder hornets, you dumbass. I'm, I'm on board. And so they find these murder hornets in Washington State. They track them to a tree, and they um, went in there, and they got permission from the owner of the property. And he said, yeah, go in there and get them out of there. And so they're in this hollow tree. And so what they did is they waited a couple of days, and they wrapped the tree in plastic at night when they were inside there. And then they hooked up a giant shop vac, and they've got 200 and some murder hornets out of there and i just got the heebie-jeebies thank you that's the good news and now with the even worse news when they looked in the shop vac there were seven keebler elves <laughs> Ernie's dead. damn it you got me no it's true you all duff no it's true and so all the keebler elves are dead and so now there's gonna be a shortage of your fudge striped cookies rob and so you're probably gonna die not the fudge <laughs> so I have, I have a fun fact on that. Um, See? The be- I'm going to die. Fun fact. <laughs> no, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get invited back if the the podcast host dies the day I come on. Right? Oh, I'll figure out how to run this thing. <laughs> um, so the, the, the bees that are being attacked by the Asiatic hornets, they're not defenseless. So a lot of the time, those hornets, they'll actually scout out with one or two hornets that will go inside of the nest. And then when they find like large groups of honeybees, they'll eat a few, then they'll come back and they'll alert the rest of their hive. Then they'll send a large hive towards that beehive to eat everything. But when those first few scouts come in, a lot of the time, the honeybees will surround, they'll, they'll a few honeybees are going to be killed already by the hornet. And then the remaining honeybees will create a ball around the hornets and they'll vibrate their flight muscles as fast as they can and this will produce a ton of heat. So they can produce up to um, 47 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry, I don't know my American temperatures. Canadians. The, the, <laughs> the heat will be so extreme that it'll roast and kill the hornets. And the bees have, um, they can tolerate a higher temperature. So most of them will survive the attack and the giant hornet will be completely roasted. It's is, a 117 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I read that too. And I don't know if you, did you see the part about the Keebler Elves being dead? It's, it's in the. I did see the, C, it is actually here on CBS News and murder hornets destroyed in Washington state as they search for more nests October 26, 2020. CBS see, so News. I am partly, legit. I am partly right. That's all I had for you. Good news, bad news, worse news. I, I do not know if the honeybees will roast Keebler Elves. I do not have the data on that. Well, you know, it totally made sense to me once I started thinking about it, is that why are the Keebler elves sharing a tree with honeybees or whatever? You know, and I would imagine they're just probably getting all the honey and sweetening up those cookies. I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, that's, oh. a, that's a strong one for sure. So uh, they're probably a pest yeah. then. They'll probably be roasted. The problem that the American honeybees are having is that they don't have that uh, roasting defense. That's only bees yeah. in Asia. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'd understood is that the Japanese and the Asiatic bees is, have that defense. Incredible. You guys are full of information. Not one of you knew that the Keebler elves are dead. Hey, I just Googled it. It's right here. Thousands of uh, dead bees found in the colony along with dead Keebler elves. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're only full of shit, Jimmy. Don't what? worry. I tried. Well, let's get to our uh, topic at hand. Uh, again, guys, we do these things on Mondays at 7 p.m. Central. If the stars align and we don't have guests cancel on us, but even so, we we have occasional backups. So come join us, AquariumGuysPodcast.com. We even have this live on Twitch. So if you want to see our fat faces, come uh, come join in for the debauchery. But uh, let's uh, let's start the topic and let's just do a, like a quick round. So I'll just keep uh, picking a couple of names. We ask every one of our guests that join why they got into the hobby. So Oscar, you know why why are you doing fish at this age? Come on now. Um, so, uh, growing up, I didn't have a lot of friends and only the fit. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, didn't have a lot of friends. You put shit to mold in jars. You didn't have any money. No, I, I, um, from a very young age, I just loved fish. I mean, I started out as dinosaurs and at some point you realize they're all dead and being a paleontologist is just boring. They're hard um, to keep you. Yeah. They take so a lot once- of room. Once I learned for that, I was naturally looking for another type of animal that I could become obsessed with. And fish just had so much variation that I was hooked. So from oh, there, yeah. I just I started to keep smaller tanks. And then I started to major in a lot of physiology and uh, uh, evolutionary biology focused in fish and insects. 
now I'm a PhD student in that. And the whole time I've been getting as many aquariums as I could. And I love my fish. Excellent. I just got stuck in the hobby and no wet stuff in jars. Um, <laughs> who's next? A spiritual what you got? Well, you know, they're, they're kind of funny. You know, they just kind of swim around. And I was like, you know, I think I want some of those. It's not a very deep story. There's really nothing more to it than that. I just it was like... It was a magical moment where you're in Petco and you had an epiphany, you shit your pants and had to have a beta. <laughs> it was, no, I just got some Tetris. I was like, these, these, things are, these things are pretty fun. And then, you know, and then they all died. But, you know, we've made strides since then. Well, for those that don't know, we've uh, talked about a couple episodes um, actually got brought to light by a spiritual... Right, we've talked about it a couple times in the podcast, and uh, you are responsible for uncovering that whole Mauen Sweetwater story. So thank oh, you. That is, that is my that is like my magnum opus of finding stuff. I don't know, but it's, yeah, I don't know even how I stumbled across that, but it, it's it's interesting. I I think we should start a Kickstarter thingy where we save our beer cans and, and then buy a plane ticket for somebody to go over there and investigate this. Cause I want to hear more about that. Cause I'm still baffled. That's it. We'll, we'll send spiritual. He's in Canada oh, he needs to go somewhere. Oh, I might die, but it's, it'll be worth it. You know what? I'm willing to make that risk. <laughs> if you die, it, it, I'll, I'll deal with it. Right, you get a free trip out of it. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, underscored. Uh, how did you get in this hobby? Well, it kind of all started when I was really little. Family kept like betas and stuff, and they all died after a month or whatever. When I was like 10, we decided that we were cursed and wouldn't keep any more fish because they all kept dying, and we just couldn't figure out why. Um, so I didn't, didn't keep anything for several, several years until uh, I was in... AP Biology my junior year of high school, and my teacher had a really, really ugly, poorly kept aquarium. <laughs> what, was it full of endlers? No, it was like 10 gallon or so, uh, had like angelfish and just whatever from Petco. The background was tinfoil <laughs> for some reason. It had like neon gravel and plastic plants and such. Tinfoil, hats and aquariums. Yeah, it was, it was really bad, and the teacher's whole thing was that he would buy a whole new batch of fish every year because they would all die by the end of the year <laughs> he must have bought adam's endlers that, that's what it would, that's what it was so uh, i gotta say we've, we've had a lot of people answer this question and uh love it first tinfoil didn't expect that one i yeah. uh, actually would take tinfoil and paint it blue and crumple it up a little bit and put it on the back when i was young <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool uh, what is it just make it? I grew up in North or? Dakota. You can just suck it, okay? Did it make it look like a beer can? Is that what you're trying to go? No, for? it was just pretty. Yep, uh, pretty. just a little spray paint on, on on some blue tin foil. I want people to do this. I feel like you were this the, is your assignment. You're one of the people that like put up Bud Light neon signs in their front yard. I've got one down on my bar right now. <laughs> Called it. So but you no, have, I, you have homework. I told. I, I want people to try this. T take tin foil. And and throw some spray paint in the back of the tinfoil. Don't put the damn tinfoil in your tank, but take it, tape it to the back and um, see how cool it looks. It looks cool. I'll have to give that a try. Uh, May, my, how, how do you say that name? May. May. So wh what's your story? How did you get in the hobby? Uh, so my story kind of happens in three parts. Um, okay. It kind of started with a, with a fish tank, and it turns out uh, hamsters need a landing or else they just drown after a while because they can only like, swim <laughs> for about... 30 or 40 minutes and then they fatigue uh and i didn't know this so went back to petco and um and a beta was cheaper than a landing so there you no, uh so when i was younger I, I was like starting off in the navy i was going on my first deployment and one of my buddies got stationed in hawaii and there's some kind of ban on importing animals or something over there uh and i was on a warship that was going to be stopping in hawaii so i kind of smuggled the fish this is all theoretical and never actually happened. Yeah, um, no. Uh, it was a so, movie, right? Like literally on the side of a, a, a ship the size of an aircraft barrier, lowering a bucket into the water to try and scoop them, some up and then warm it up and do water changes and that kind of stuff to bring him his fish from San Diego to Hawaii. So that, that kind of like percolated the idea. And then I came back and beforehand he had brought me to a store that was local. And uh, I got back from my deployment. And it's funny, there's somebody in the 
that keeps popping in and out here. Uh, you might see him pop in uh, Funk. Uh, he worked at a local pet store, and I would go in because uh, the traffic down here is so terrible going southbound until about 7 o'clock, and I'd get off work at 4. So I would go chill at this pet store for about three hours or so, just or like somewhere nearby until I, you know, it didn't take me two and a half hours to drive 10 miles. And the guy that's in this channel now, if you see him, he's showing all his uh, algae. He would let me clean the tanks. And I say let me, he would exploit me uh, <laughs> by having me clean tanks. But I eventually, I think it's called human trafficking. I think it's what it's called. All the, uh, all the scraps of coral and stuff that, uh, that accumulated underneath all the, the display tanks, I would, uh, I would bag them up and take them home and just start dumping them into a tank. And I ended up just making this 240 gallon um, cluster frick of just <laughs> bits and pieces of who knows what muck and coral and pests and, and whatever. I, it ended up being a 130 gallon tank with a 240 gallon sump uh, that was an entire fuge all the way across the, the length of an eight foot length that pumped it all back up into the 130. And from there, just stayed in the hobby. <laughs> See, Jimmy, there's another guy that likes to do Petri dishes. Mine just was jars with mold. His was a little bit more, you know, modern and expensive. Yours was jars of literal liquid shit. <laughs> it wasn't just <laughs> shit. It was bread. It was vegetables. It was dead animals, <laughs> like a b dead bird that would hit the window. You are You're a fine example of why some animals eat their young. I, you know... You just look at you and go, I wish you'd quit running the microwave with a door open, you dumbass. Man, so feisty. All wow. right, since now we got introductions done, and uh, a shout-out to Funk. Did we get everybody? Uh, I believe we got everybody. Did we miss someone? We got everybody? Okay. So let's get to the, like, the topic now, and it's going to be like a little round-robin session we're going to do here. Um, for those that are beginners listening to the podcast, what we're about to talk about is this is not for you. We're just <laughs> going to talk about stupid shit that we have done in our aquariums uh what we like to call you know funny topes or uh, trash topes there's gonna be a lot of conversations just things that are not intended because a biotope generally would be like putting plants to uh, logs decor trying to like mirror something in the amazon or africa or australia this is just what we've done for silliness so to give uh the first uh story um spiritual uh I know that you, sir, are a fan of the trash taupe. Uh, can you explain to listeners what a trash taupe is? So the trash taupe, or the under-the-bridge biotope, as I also called it, was the utterly stupid idea I had. Basically, I sat down, I was looking at this tank I had, and it was just it's just kind of a meh tank, you know, just some anacris and stuff. And I'm like, what can I do with this tank? And I was like, oh, I know, I'm just going to chuck a bunch of random garbage into it so it looks like a like polluted waterway. And, you know, that, that'll be, that's a great idea. Uh, it wasn't, but here, I can show it to you now, actually. On my video. Please. It seemed like a good uh, idea at the time. I'll try. Well, I can't move the freaking webcam any closer, but now it is, or Just I might be listening to it. Pick but, up the tank and bring it closer. Well, if oh, you guys want to actually listen, we'll have uh, links in the chat. And I believe you did a YouTube <laughs> video on creating your trash tope. I did make a video on that. I had... And it's prime. It still has like I put some glass jars in there just just for the like just to be cute. And I've left those in there because you know it it's glass. It's not going to leach anything, so it's been it's been fine. But the original model, which included um, let's see, it included a soda can, some plastic forks and knives, a yogurt lid, and a Ziploc bag. Uh, that that version no longer exists, but you know it's still. It doesn't have the same feel to it, but I, it's it's still it's still got it's still a little bit there. So like, again, the, the idea of the trash taupe is you're trying to emulate pollution for comedy's sake. So when yeah. someone goes up to your tank and they're expecting, oh, what do you have in there? And they look, and it looks like, you know, something like a pond or a lake bed that would just have a beer can sitting there or something else. And you, yeah, I like how you carefully uh, um, collected the correct specimens. So you did food grade utensils. You did uh, aluminum cans, which do not seep or rust into the tank, like a lot of people would do with different objects. Everything you put in there was strategic to be aquarium safe. So the yogurt uh, lids and uh, a jar, the aluminum can with no uh, soda liquid in it once rinsed and washed out, plastic forks, even the Ziploc bag, which the risk there is if your fish go in it and get stuck. Yeah, I, 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 did you leave any weed in it? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> that would be a, a Snoop Dogg taupe. Snoop Dogg taupe. <laughs> and uh, we should love do that. the idea. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> For the can, I... Because I, I knew if I opened the can from the top, some dumb sort. Let me just back up for a second and say the whole idea was because this tank is, you, I don't, you don't think you can see them, but it's just like generic, terrible, random live bearers. I was like, well, these fish are kind of yeah. good. Handlers, yeah. Handlers. Yeah, we hate yeah. them too. There's, there's, they're mostly, there's mostly like sword tails actually, but. Uh, Go yourselves. Go fluker. Go I, was fluker. Like, I was like, how, how can I embrace this idea? I'm like, well, the fish are garbage, so let's make the tank garbage as well. Uh, but yeah, even the can, because I knew one of the dumbasses would swim through the lid. Like, if I had opened it, one of them would cut itself or something. So I actually oh, I stabbed it through the bottom, drained all the liquid, and then buried it in the substrate. But I'm not sure. So when a bunch of fish started to die, I I I broke, I took out all the, you know, what I assumed to be offending, like, materials whether or not it was actually that or something unrelated that just happened to come at a bad time i'm not really sure but you know for now we're back down to just some glass stuff and all the fish are doing well so that, that's where we're at now but one day i'd like to bring it back with like leeches or something looks like a condom in the back there is that what that is <laughs> nope that's the ziploc bag that's the ziploc bag okay there you go good uh good play at that so some of the trash tropes that uh you know i've dealt with um only been me i mean honestly i've just done a couple for fun because i've had so many different tanks you are twisted and i haven't had any problems now a lot of these times like yogurt containers the plastic forks i've used these as tools in the tank so like yogurt containers i've used as uh i've cut them to replace broken pieces on a filter as like flow redirections uh forks i actually use plastic forks to essentially stick or skewer zucchini for placos in the bottom of the tank since i can't get the uh, stupid zucchini to sink those objects you've, you've mentioned, I have not had any problems in the past. I know the tank that you're using is very small and subject to a lot of risk. Mine were a bit bigger that I've done in the past. But, uh, you know, Jimmy just has that uh, comedic accession with a beer can. So if you're ever to use a beer can, not only do I not really know if it seeps, but I know it's food safe and it doesn't rust. So it doesn't oxidize and put, you know, the, the chemicals in the water that you think of. Um, but my, my concern, like you said, cover the hole. So if you're going to do it, like you, you buried it, you made sure that fish can't get into it with the sharp edges. Um, me, I've actually just taken uh, um, hot glue because I know that uh, doesn't leach into the water, certain um, glue gun hot glue, and I just filled the hole so nothing can get in there either. That's smart. Well, yeah, I think, I think one day I'd like to, to readdress it. Um, I want, the, the, the issue is I really want an old boot in there. <laughs> I just know it's a bad idea. <laughs> So maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll just do like random microfauna and like some leeches to make it really nasty. You know, we were just on vacation here uh, about a month ago. We went down to South Dakota to the reptile gardens. If anybody is not familiar with the reptile gardens, it is a the largest reptile collection in the United States, and they've got just tons of stuff. And one thing that was interesting is they had a a setup with tarantulas, and inside this big tarantula cage, they had old like western boots and cowboy hats and stuff and these damn things have gone in there and made nests and and stuff and it looked really freaking cool and so i totally get why you want to put an old boot in there because i think it'd be kind of cool just uh if you do an old boot you almost have to cut the front part of the boot so it opens up like a little cave for play coke or something but uh don't put boots in your aquarium no. uh keep it if you're gonna do it like recreate something with your 3d printer and then make sure it's aquarium safe or Take one of those little treasure chests that chop fish's heads off and put it in there. That's cool. So, <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, tell Actually, the kids I mean, about those. Those are excellent. If you guys remember those little treasure chests with a scuba diver that would pop up and, and close back in the day when I was young, which was a long time ago. The 50s had lead ones. Oh, bite me. It wasn't the 50s. But anyway, it's probably in the <laughs> 80s. And actually, those lids were pretty freaking heavy. And what how they work is they blow air bubbles in, in, underneath the lid until the lid opens up. And then when it closes, it kind of comes down in a chopping sense, kind of like your Ginsu knife. And I, I, I had a couple beheaded guppies at times. So I highly suggest that if you want to be entertained or take bets on if the guppies are going to make it or not. 
<laughs> okay, I, I used I used to put brine shrimp pellets in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I put brine shrimp. I was young. You're evil. But brine shrimp pellets in the little thing, and, and they would just wait for it to open up, and they'd go in there and try to eat real quick. You just whap. That's what you do uh, with uh, with those endlers, right? That's what I'm doing with you now. After, after after we fat shamed you for so long, I'm just gonna now put food out there and then take a shovel and whack you every time you grab it. Robs, why are you circumcised? Well, because Jimmy brought out his lead uh, treasure chest That's figurine correct. from his aquarium. You eat through your penis. <laughs> he breathes through his butthole like a turtle. We all know that. Well, this is this is spiraling out of control. Well, uh, Oscar, what are some of the examples that you have for you know funny decor stories or uh, different quote unquote fun topes? Well, I'm glad you asked, Rob. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Put your seatbelt on. It's going to be crazy. So if you've ever seen my tanks, and I post them a lot, so you probably have, they're very, they emulate an environment. They're very traditional. They're not, I mean, they're not boring, but they're not particularly interesting. But right now I work at a lab. But before that, I worked at a little place called the Department of Ichthyology. And that was a, so I used to work at a museum, and I'd have to set up lots of different, Tanks for that museum. What's the nastiest fish you can imagine? Endlers. Sea lamprey. Oh, wait, it's oh, endlers. Definitely what? endlers are worse than sea lamprey. Well, Rob, oh. you get it. Lampreys. Sea lampreys. That or the, uh, what was it? The, the babbit worm, bobbit worm. The one that goes up your person? No. Oh, uh, Andrew. That. No, so we, we had a lamprey tank that, uh, so we basically had a parasitic holy um, shit. animal that's a, display. That's a nightmare. So I had to set up the lamprey tank. And now they provide me with the tank because as a lowly um, employee there, they, they, had, they gave me the supplies and I just set them up. So right. they gave me basically a custom 200-gallon tall. And well, if you've well, ever... Let's tea time just for a minute for our listeners. So for those that are, uh, you know, don't know what a sea lamprey is, I suggest uh, first finish your food. Um, don't eat while you Google this, but then take a moment, Google it, and you will find yourself the most horrible creature uh, I can think of. It's literally an eel-like tube creature that at the end of it has a diagonal circle mouth that is just filled with uh, teeth. It almost looks like uh, what you'd expect the end of like a, a Graboid from the Tremors movie would be, or the opening on that, uh, like some Star Wars creature that's going to pull you into sand. It's a, it's a crazy creature that in the ocean attaches to fish and essentially just bites and sucks their fluids. So one thing about that is that it's not just the ocean. The ones we use were invasive in Lake Ontario. And basically, the native lampreys are about eight inches long. But these invasive Atlantic lampreys that um, got into the lake are up to three feet long. Uh. and they're they're terrible i mean i the last time i went fishing in lake ontario every single fish i pulled out had lamprey marks on it and um they basically have these big um keratin teeth that they use to hold on to you and they have this little disgusting tongue that they used to scrape away at you and just eat drink blood and whatever else they can get off so they're terrible horrible creatures and they gave me a 200 gallon toll to put them in the thing with that is that if you put a lamprey in an aquarium, it's just going to sit at the bottom. And this is a tall tank. So we ended up having a tank with nothing in it and about a foot of lampreys on the bottom. <laughs> a foot of non-moving, disgusting lampreys just wriggling around at the bottom and then like three feet of just empty tank. If that was me, it, wouldn't I like put something on a hook so you would inspire the lampreys to go up, suction cup to it, and then feed off of whatever's there so they can see the length of these giant tube penises? What we basically just did was we'd, fr we'd just throw in um, freshly dead for, uh, or slightly thawed fish, just mostly just fresh, fresh fish. We'd just throw in. They'd rasp away and eat at it. Uh, a few of them died because I assume they were getting outcompeted, but I know some people will add in... Um, chopped beef heart or bits of different cow parts, but we only did um, freshly slaughtered fish. Yeah, you don't want to teach these things to come up on land and start sucking on cows, that's for sure. I, so I got a quick question for you. So you got this disgusting tank with these nasty fish in there. Did you guys ever, like, go out after work, have a couple of beers and go, you know what, I'll, I'll give you 20 bucks if you put your junk in the water for just 10 seconds. You ever do that? 
Um, well, as much as I wanted to, most of the department was like like 50 to 70 year old men who are like super serious. And I'm just here like this 20 year old who is an alcoholic. And then we're just like, mm. <laughs> so you, so, so you didn't, fit, right? Um, I've, you could tell us. I've yeah. What I'm getting from that is you did it on your own. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know you did it. I know you did it. I, how dare you I, do me? I did fool around with them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so like if you had a friend that worked there and he fooled around with it a little bit, what would you have done with lamprey? Because I mean, I I wouldn't put my net in there. Honestly, I'd stick it to my arm and see how bad it hurts. Well, when we were moving them in, we had to do it by hand, right? Right. Uh, and are you not going to try and jiggle one around a little bit? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Just hold it out like like it's uh, Jimmy on his birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah. My birthday. I have the curator walk by in his suit and be like, "Hey, catch!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, mean, mean. Um, but no, I did not stick any sort of um of my genitals in there. I feel like, as much as it would be a funny joke, I like being able to mate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we we feel yeah. Plus, explain that one to the doctor. If you get if it latches on for too long and and you get like a little circular bite on it, I mean, how do you explain that to the doctor when you go and say, "I need probably a shot of penicillin." And you know, maybe some oxycodone. <laughs> you just tell them you have the strangest hickey. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm haunted. Number one, don't put lampreys in your tank, and uh, if you do, definitely hold them in front of you like it's a schlong. All right. Um, <laughs> next item up for bid. Next item up for business. Are we gonna go past this lamprey thing, and nobody's gonna mention like uh, Agitententa and the movie Teeth or anything like that? Oh, do oh, that. No, I can't. I can't think about the movie Teeth. Uh, I just want to make sure that image was in everybody's head before we got off topic. Be sure to come to the Aquarium Guys Discord where we're going to group watch Teeth. Yeah, no, let's not. Never say we did. So for those, I'm not even going to tell you what it is because I don't feel like explaining this. Uh, just Google Teeth. Don't watch the movie. Uh, terrible. Terrible. <laughs> that kept me up at night. Um, so next, uh, um, May. Uh, what do you what do you got for us for uh, crazy decor ideas, different stuff you've done for topes and tanks? Well, I'm, I haven't done a whole lot of them. I know I had been brought up on the uh, there's this one tank with a beer bottle in it for the longest time, and I always called like the the human encroachment to uh, you know beer bottle, maybe like a Vons bag, a multi story hotel, whatever you can fit into the tank is good. But on my side of the house, I've got some theory topes, I suppose. You know, like uh, an empty fish tank with some fish in it. That's a theory tope. It could be anything. But uh, I like the Futurama's Atlanta tope, where you just put in new mills of Coca-Cola every day. Uh, so <laughs> maybe that's going to be long for some people that are a little younger. But uh, the day tope, that's when you have a canister filter and you point it into the air instead of into the fish tank. Uh, <laughs> the turbidity tope, which I... I think I've seen several times. If you're not familiar with turbidity, it's basically just junk getting flown up in the air, or rather in the water, in the fluid for this case. And that's uh, when you see somebody who's put just too many filters and pumps on their tank because, you know, flow is godliness. Uh, <laughs> the barista taupe, also known as the Starbucks taupe. Uh, I like this one because uh, it, it's not actually coffee. Most people will think it's coffee. It's more about having a live mermaid and convincing 12-year-olds to be addicted to caffeine. Uh, less related to the fish tank, but... You get the idea. Uh, brewery taupe is one of my favorites. It's not really the fish tank itself. I know I'm going tangent here. It's more of like a service. It's when you get a middle-aged uh, bearded man to come by and clean your tank, and he smugly describes other tanks that uh, may or may not be better than yours while he works on yours. So there's that. And then the uh, my personal favorite, and I will always advocate for, is the cyanotope, because it is the, you know, cyanobacteria produces more oxygen on the planet than any other thing has ever. Uh, and it's, you know, the best sell, in my opinion. But uh, that pretty much covers all my theory topes. For real topes? Oh, my God. You know, that, it, was, that was brilliant. We need, uh, we need to do, like, an aquarium stand-up bit on you that know, shit. What he said about the Starbucks. <laughs> it took me back to last week where Rob says, hey, have you seen Bert Kirshner and his new thing called Cabin where he goes out into the woods and, and, and tries to find himself? He's got all these other comedians that join him, and they gave each other coffee animas that was the first thing that went into my head you said starbucks that is by far the oh, greatest. No. 
tope, by like the way. I said, the, the Starbucks Hello, tope, it's, it's more about a live mermaid and getting a children addicted okay. to drugs than it is about coffee. Okay. Uh, I feel good about so, that. Anyway, I love the yeah. actual tope. So this podcast not brought to you by Starbucks. <laughs> uh, actual topes, you know, people rag on, on all kinds of different... If you want the SpongeBob tope, go for it. If you... If you want the rock that's glued onto a to styrofoam so it floats, you know, go for it. Uh, earlier, you spoke about the aluminum can. Uh, Miss not there. I believe that aluminum does have a high affinity for oxygen, so it, it oxidizes, but it's a weathering metal. So that outside letter, letter, or sorry, that outside layer becomes a protective layer once it absorbs the oxygen. Uh, right. So quick note on that one. For me, the fish tank is like whiskey. So if you're going to ask somebody, what is the best kind of whiskey? The answer will always be the whiskey you like and what's the best way to drink it the way you like to drink it straight. and i feel the same way for the fish tank yeah if you want it straight if you want it on the rocks whatever you want that's the best way to do it it's so subjective to, to penalize and attack somebody for how they like their tank to look it's just it seems like a waste of time to me so my favorite taupe whatever you want man what whatever you want i like the spongebob i i really would like a spongebob that's been popular yeah. love, like the theme well, tank like mario brothers are like recreating a, a water level I've considered this, but the, the shrimp ends up eating the crab, the crab ends up eating the sponge, and then just everything's dead in your system. <laughs> and for some reason, there's a squirrel that's rotting on the top. An angry squirrel. Like I said in the very beginning, the hamster needs a landing. Do not forget that. <laughs> so, quick question about the hamster. Did you get your money back at Petco or no? Have you ever tried to get a refund at Petco? They just trick you into buying something else. Right. They just trick you. And then, and then the thing is, it's it's damn hard if you ever tried this. Have you ever tried to find a, a little life jacket for a hamster? They're hard to find. No, you, they don't sell them. And then trying to walk in, and if if your hamster had a heart attack, I get it. But if it's soaking wet, a box that came in is dripping. Trying to convince the person that your hamster drowned, uh, they're not going to give you anything. That's why it's important to blow dry your dead hamster before you take it in. <laughs> Absolutely, life is brought to you by. The aquarium guys. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> well, May, I have been enlightened. Uh, I never thought about the theory topes, but damn it, if that's not the best shit I've heard in a week. No, what he's done a, a Star Trek, like the old, you know, the old '60s Star Trek, you know, and, and just had Doctor Spock and everybody down on the bottom. That'd be the best one there. You have something better, Rob? I uh, no, the, I can't, uh, can't think of anything think better than uh, than Spock, other than that. Mar I want a mermaid now that serves coffee at Starbucks. Well, the uh, with the Star Trek tope, that, the most important about that one is is applying uh, racial undertones to all of your fish, and just keeping it so subtle nobody notices until a slur is mentioned. That is true, because the uh, it was the first interracial kiss ever on TV was on Star Trek. You are absolutely right, and uh, almost every race that came out of that was uh, the design was to expose people to different cultures. So if you look at the Klingons very remnant of older tribal and nomadic uh, Muslim culture, that kind of stuff. And it applies throughout most of the characters within the show. And back then it didn't offend anybody. Well, getting back on topic, we have, uh, <laughs> oh, we had a topic. We, we have a topic. Oh, shit. So unscored. How about you? Uh, fun topes, decoration ideas. What have you done for fun? Well, I think probably my best is the beaker, which is a, it's about a gallon I stole it from my high school <laughs> uh, back in senior year when I was in AP environmental science. And I just threw some soil in the bottom with some twigs. And ever since I've just been throwing like plant scraps in there, a uh, huge thriving population of scuds. I used to have aquatic isopods in there. Uh, I've thrown shrimp in there occasionally, but it's got like some thriving, <laughs> thriving dwarf Sagittarius that isn't planted at all. <laughs> it's just floating in this stagnant water column and it's growing like crazy. I sent a picture. You can see all the roots and such. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's literally like just a, uh, a, a cup of sludge. It's, you can see the plants. It's through it, liquid soil at this point. It used to be kind of clear. <laughs> But have you ever put like that era is long gone? I haven't done any water changes or anything like that in like probably two years now. What's that smell like? Nothing. It doesn't smell like ass, really. No, it 
it looks perfectly like, fine. Like, like this. Have you ever the drank out time, of it? The only time it smelled a little bit was I threw some mulberry leaves in it, and it did not like that. Didn't like uh, that. My room, my room smelled like sewer for about a week. Jeez. <laughs> Rob's does, too, and he doesn't even have one of those. All right, so for this particular, what we call the, what was it, the science sludgescape, you need to put some <laughs> some scuds in there. I think that would be the perfect addition to really make that beaker the perfect thing. Yeah, it's got a billion scuds in it. Oh, it does have scuds. You weren't paying attention again. I, I must. My ears must have popped. Wake up. You know, yeah. earlier There's... before we started this, this podcast, we are trying to decide what we wanted to name it, and I think it should be Confessions of Shit I Stole from High School. I think that's what we should be. <laughs> it should be. And there's a whole lot of confessions today about stuff that people are brought home. Now, going through these pictures, and again, you guys can join the Discord. There is plenty of uh, pictures to see when we do these podcasts live. Um, I see here, Spiritual, that you put one above, said that you had this in your fish tank at this point. Can you explain the picture I'm looking at? Oh, swing and a miss. Looks like Spiritual uh, had to go out uh, for a break. If it helps, I can explain that. Back. Oh, there you go. Now he is. There he is. Sorry, I was gone, but I didn't hear anything you said. So, Oh, this picture I, I see here in Discord. Spiritual, you... explain Hampshire. Hampshire. <laughs> can you explain that to us? And explain why no one should ever recreate this monstrosity. You're muted again, sir. No, you're not. I just can't hear you. Uh, he might be having connection difficulties. I'll tell you about a tank that a friend of mine did that he did out of laziness. He owned a pet store up in Bemidji, Minnesota. His name's, <laughs> his name's Mark. I'm not going to throw Mike, Mark Sparby under the bus. Because he never <laughs> left him But anyway, so Mark was going to have a betta sale, and I was his wholesaler, and he goes, bring me up 200 bettas in a cup. I said, okay. And so I take up 200 bettas in a cup, and he has a sale, sells 100 of them that first weekend and stuff. And anyway, if you have ever had 100 extra bettas laying around and you have to do, you know, changes of the water in all the cups, after a few weeks, it becomes to be a lot. So what he thought he'd do, he ordered another 200 bettas, and he thought it'd be really cool if he put... 200 beta cups inside of a 55 gallon tank with an aerator and so these cups just kind of floated around with these bettas in there so the bettas were in a cup in an oxygenated tank what yes killed them all well they can't okay so here's what happened right no it was a great sale for me but he killed 200 freaking bettas right okay but here's the dumb I got to explain the dumb because we're going to get feedback on this dumb so thank you Uh, oh they can call you anytime night or day the dumb of this right is that betas have a, a lung system, Labyrinth. right? That, that they breathe directly out of the surface of the water. That's why betas are put in cups, quote unquote, not that they should be, but it can be for extended periods of time, is because they absorb <laughs> oxygen directly off of that water surface. So putting these in cups, which again, you'd think that there's water flow through the cup, they still have no way to get to oxygen. So oh, he had an air stone in there and it was bubbling and they were just kind of churning like rubber duckies at the state. And this fair. is a pet store owner. It was beautiful for about a day. I'm just glad he'll never listen to the podcast because we're going it, to, it's going to be nothing. But I've got his number. We him. will call him. We'll he's, call him. He's a banker out in Western North Dakota. If you're looking for him, I would say clearly he doesn't do a pet store anymore. No, <laughs> no. And the thing is, is that it was just a quick idea to, to save uh, water changes and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was not good. That is the that's how we won the war, having better tanks. Oh, better tank. Oh my god, better tanks. <sighs> on, on that note, uh, uh, uh spiritual is back. Wonderful, spiritual. Can you explain this picture that we see in Discord to us? Hello, so uh, this is the work of Hampshire, a man who has been trying to do the single task of keeping hamsters underwater for the past, uh, I think, 10 years. Wait, what? <laughs> you heard me. This is the guy doing this. This isn't you. No, this is not me. I'm not that. And how do you this spell the right name? <laughs> I need to. I need to have more information. Hampshire. Hampshire. Nice there, like. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now the fish were there very temporarily. Like I'm talking. He made a video where he added the fish, and then the next day, all the fish were gone. But yeah, he's been trying to make a un- underwater hamster habitat. Uh, he has been 
Un, he has been attacked by almost every animal like anyone who cares about hamsters basically it's it's quite the uh it's qu- it's quite the ordeal we've tried to get him on our podcast but oh my god right. i need to contact this guy i just want to like i i would love to just like i would love to help this guy successfully have fish in his hamster tank this man okay i'm reading this because this is a, a, a thing on reddit and uh they, they have a lot of like this is very very well documented Oh yeah, he's, um, he's been doing this for a long time. I'm looking at R deep into YouTube, and this gentleman, uh, the only way I can put this, you know those giant sealed uh, containers that you can buy, and they come in different sizes, and they're meant to waterproof things in like a boat um, <laughs> or your RV for camping and whatnot. He yeah. essentially took these these units, and whatever sizes, and sealed a hamster inside of these containers and put it in the bottom of his large aquarium. Okay, so, so when you look so, into his aquarium, you see fish. And we're going to have, I, I swear to God, we're going to have this YouTube video linked in uh, the show notes below so you can watch it. He literally has a hamster cage inside of an aquarium. And how he's, looks like he's transporting oxygen to the container is with a air pump. And it's pumping in fresh air into the hamster's dry, sealed enclosure inside the aquarium. How does, how does the... Uh... Air escape. I mean, if you're pumping air in, air has to come out, correct? Okay, imagine you're watching Star Wars Episode One, and you get to the scene where they meet Jar Jar Brinks, and they, they swim down to the bottom of the ocean, and they have, like, these air pocket domes where everybody lives in a city underneath, kind of like Atlantis. Like SpongeBob. He's making a retarded garbage version, uh, putting a hamster in the bottom of his aquarium. I think I think uh, SpongeBob should sue him. <laughs> I'm trying to steal their idea. I I don't know if this is ethical, inhumane. So, so he, I will say this: the hamsters do not live fully underwater. Like they do not stay in there all the time. Like he will take them out. They have a larger enclosure. I'm not I'm not trying to like defend him fully. I'm just there's some people who are convinced they are like kept underwater fully, which doesn't even make sense logically because you hamsters don't eat. The tank with it yeah. <laughs> so, and the thing is, hamsters uh, create so much ammonia that they, they would take themselves out pretty quick. After, this actually. hurts my brain more than you can realize. He's been doing it for 10 my, years. Somebody <laughs> sent me a picture of this. Oh, we're going to send you the YouTube video, bro. Oh, it's a YouTube oh, video. Oh, no. He's got updates. Announcement. I'm going on a trip to do cool underwater stuff. Oh, he's oh, very no. active. Like, he posts a lot. He he made himself a sealed relay system so they can go between containers. Well, you can't breed them if you don't have them together. No, but 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 okay, you know how they make those hamster enclosures with the tubes that connect them all together and they make like a giant yep. hamster maze and city. He's trying to recreate that underneath in his aquarium. So he's got like multiple containers underwater where his hamsters are dry inside these units with tubes in the middle. And this is upsetting people. I don't know if it's upsetting people, but my my brain has exploded. I mean, it, you know, is, it, it is definitely upsetting people. I can say that. <laughs> Our government sent uh, chimpanzees and dogs up into outer space. Yeah, this, is, this is better than that. Training. And this is much better. Uh, he's got about a 50% dislike ratio, so I think that's pretty bad for YouTube. Yeah, he's not really liked. Sending prayers and positive air pressure is the first comment. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, he has a whole uh, whole blog on this. Uh, I need to I need to find this person. I'm watching the video and I listen to the first three words out of the guy's mouth, and he sounds like a serial killer. Does he like? Yeah. Oh, then we definitely need him on. He is. Um, I, I don't know what like I don't know where he falls on the spectrum, but he has openly stated that he is autistic. Okay, that explains a okay. lot. Back from vacation, footage coming soon. So oh, I don't know much about this, but apparently he's working on a larger. So, so like the hamster habitats aren't that big. They're quite, they're really small. They're really fucking small. Uh, uh, I've seen people put hamsters in these same size enclosures outside of water, but it doesn't make it that great. Like you should yeah. have a bigger, bigger so one. He's, he's working on a project called the mega hab, I believe. And I think, I don't know how that's going or anything, but that, that he does have plans for it, and I'm very excited to see how that turns out. And it's amazing the detail of care. He's got water containers, special toys. Like he's got the whole universe underneath the aquarium for these things. You know, I, I did not expect that tonight's podcast would go in this direction at all. <laughs> Love him or hate him, this guy will probably be the only person living after an apocalypse. He'll probably have a 
a, a little place to live down in the bottom of the lake, and he'll be alive, and the rest of us will all be dead. I swear to God, every time I, I talk to you guys in PCT, you, you expose me to new shit. I think, I don't think he'll be the only person living, but I think he'll be the only person with hamsters living. <laughs> well, at least he'll have something to eat. <laughs> this, this man will, like, pioneer, like, oh, hey, we're out of space on land. Is this guy's just going to show up from, the like, the shadows. He's going to be like, we will go under the sea. <laughs> Oh my God! And he, you know, hamsters breed quick, so you'll have constant food, and they're like chicken. Nuggets. He created. Oh, I'm looking at one of his older videos. He created a uh, hamster life support relay system, so that in case the power goes out, the hamster still gets a steady stream of oxygen from a backup pump. So if the pump ever fails, whether it's unplugged, burns out, or whatever else, his battery backup kicks in a new pump. Oh my God! This okay, is the craziest so, yeah. shit I've ever seen. What? These are dwarf hamsters, so oh. that's that makes more sense of what the hell is going. On. I thought they were like teddy bear hamsters. These are dwarf. Oh, these hamsters. are these are tiny. Yeah, right. So, so these ones are they aren't probably going to have the ammonia problems that the teddy bears would. It doesn't make this right, in my opinion. It doesn't make it right, but it's interesting. Yeah. We're just here talking about well, this. It, we are not the people trying to rate this crazy, unmeasurable content. In, in my funny? mind, the, those dwarf hamsters are a lot meaner than a regular hamster. So, <laughs> yeah, they're vicious little bastards. They're vicious little bastards. My favorite thing about this whole topic is that how, a, like, a, I don't want to say a lot, but how a, a decent few people found out about this more recently was when Serpa Design made his terrarium first, like, first ever terrarium and aquarium video. There's some comments that are like, this was not the first, the hamster guy was first. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. I'm looking at the dates. This goes back a long time. Oh, no, it's old. He's been doing it for a long time. I mean, he's still doing updates. There's updates as of three weeks ago. <laughs> Ham Dad Undersea Adventure. Whoa. Oh, is he trying to breed these underwater? Because now I'm actually a little more intrigued. <laughs> he's been doing this for over 10 years. What else are you going to eat, Adam, if you're under the water? <laughs> They're like chicken McNuggets. I told you. <laughs> I love his log library. Ham Sub Mach 1. He's got like, or he did like a, he attempted to do like a underwater ball where the hamster could like move around <laughs> walking in a ball. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Anyways, um, I don't think we're going to get more detailed com uh, content than that, but uh, we'll, we'll make one more round here. I, I think that uh, Adam, do you, do you want to take a turn on some crazy stuff that you've seen decorated in a tank or stuff you've done? No, I've never done anything that crazy at all. The hamster thing was the top of what I've seen. This is this is the best. We're not going to get better than this, ladies and gentlemen. But by the way, is Jim behind you? I do have to. Oh no, he uh, he stepped behind. But I, we do have to actually answer a couple uh, comments here. We got one from Blue Twenty One. He said, "Is it okay if I use Reynolds Wrap as the cover on my Endler tank, um, since they're not worth buying a normal cover for?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a picture of Reynolds Wrap on his Endler tank. <laughs> I, I wouldn't buy the expensive Reynolds Wrap. I'd get the generic stuff because you don't want to waste a lot of money on that. You use the generic stuff. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Um, just be careful on the Reynolds Wrap. Don't let it get like loose and fall into your aquarium catch a fish or worse get stuck in your filter or something or get stuck in your heater um as just a, as a warning all these different ideas we, we're telling you about the, we're not telling you to do these we're just explaining stories of either stupid stuff we've done when we we're younger uh stupid stuff more recently that we're not proud of and more or, or less just telling you funny stories to show what fish keepers have done as i'm looking at a beer can in my tank you asshole jimmy well, that, that just a little payback for the time I came home from vacation. I find a giant glass um, dildo. We can yeah, see dildo that. in my tank. So for in the, my in my discus tank. If you've been listening to the Aquarium Guys podcast, we've alluded to this in the past. Um, we have a thing between uh, fish tank people, and what we do is when we go visit a friend, especially like we go like six hours going to visit Joe Shrimp Shack. You know, I go to Ohio Fish Rescue, see those uh, wonderful people. Uh, I'm going to bring a glass dildo with me. And what I do is... Because Rob has before buys leave, by the dozen. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a fish store. It doesn't matter if it's a YouTuber. Uh, just any friend, I recommend going get yourself, get your 100% pure glass dildo and put it in their tank and leave it as a memento because here's what they're going to do. They're going to take it. They're going to message you, why the hell did you do this? They're, you're going to laugh together. 
And then that person you left the dildo behind with is going to take it and he's going to prank a friend. So it's the dildo that never stops giving. So <laughs> imagine it's like the world's shittiest baton pass, but only between people that have aquariums. You know, people used to buy a, I mean, this family that bought this pair of pants that was so ungodly big for everybody and they kept giving it to each other for Christmas for 30 years. That's, that's what you're going for, aren't you? Absolutely. So when we were, I in, would not be sharing a dildo with Rob or any. It's brand new. Like Don't what you used. All right, that would be absurd here. This is a brand new, out of the box, fish only dildo. All right, lightly now, used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would buy a dildo from any company that did have some type of quality assurance team. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Rectal thermometers on the on the label says we've we've tested this. <laughs> Don't do not use orally. I'm not anyway. giving them money unless they've tested it at least once. I don't want that shoddy products. So do that to your friends. I, I mean, I highly recommend I have it. another question. Do you? Why would you take something glass and put that, let's say, in your person? And why would you use glass? That just, to me. I'm not going there, but I, I mean, do recommend it for your aquarium. Okay. hundred uh, percent. It looks great. And especially the ones with like the nice base pedestal. Oh yeah. You just put it right in the sand or gravel and it just sticks up there proud and ready for everyone to see. Oh, go Is ahead. Is this one of those things where since it's clear, they don't notice it at first till it starts building that fine layer of algae. So you get like a transition from, Hey, what is that to full blown well, Venus? Kind of see the ones I get are clear mostly, but then they have like one color swirl going all the way through the, the top to bottom. Yeah. He got my wife a yeah, purple got, one. Got it. Right. So what I do is I put it in there and it's just clear enough where you're like, what is that? And you have to really zoom in. And once you get your face up to the tank, you have a, a moment of clarity like, oh, no. And then it blows on you. And then you just your head explodes. You call Rob's and blame him because that's the only one you can obviously blame. So like I went to Joe Shrimp Shack and he has a store. Now, he had a friend there and the friend saw me put it in the tank. I'm like, shh. And then I, I told the guy before people come in the store, if he doesn't notice it on his own, tell him. This is the last thing we want is like a kid walking in the store be like, mommy, I want that decoration. So uh, I left it there 15 minutes later. Sure enough, he found it, messaged me. We had a giggle. And uh, now he's going to be, you know, passing the baton. Yes. And I have a feeling someday I'm going to find you dead with that stuck up your butt and tire tracks from Joe driving away. You he's know, going to kill you. We left one for Josh and Big Rich at Ohio Fish Rescue. That's a true story. We put it in one of their bigger tanks, uh, not the biggest tank, because I'm not going to like swim down four or five feet just to put a dildo in a tank. So I put it more. It was a bigger tank you could reach at the bottom. And uh, it was there for quite a while. I think it was even got to like one or two YouTube videos because they forgot to pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can find those videos, message us and we'll give you a free T-shirt. If you send it though. to one of us, we can try to grow Zoas on it. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. You know, you know, I just had a sudden like realization of if you want to see like really bad aquariums, sometimes with like really stupid themes, what you do is you go on YouTube, right? You type in just fish tank and then you set the filter to newest first and you will find the most absurd, like strange aquariums ever. There was one uh, we found a tank made out of a guitar my favorite of all time, it was a guy, I, I can't find it anymore, and I'm so mad. The tank was the most absurd thing I've ever seen. It was huge, like, it was super tall, it was gigantic, it had, like, a dollhouse in it, and yeah, as someone just said in the podcast live chat, it had a humidity, it had a humidity detect or indicator on it. <laughs> a humidity indicator on a fish tank. It's just water. Did they just break it and make it uh, force the hundred percent? What was water. the humidity in the tank? What do you What do you think? Take a look. Take a, yes. When I was in high school, my grandmother had a old TV that you'd see from 1955, and I gutted that thing in shop class when I was a sophomore in high school, and I made that into an aquarium. And the there was two knobs on it, and one turned on the light, and and the other one increased airflow of the. Uh, of the air i just had a, a little control valve on there and i had that thing for a long time i had somebody offer me like 400 dollars for it and i sold it you can make a lot of money uh doing those tanks they're still very very popular so if you can find your old like what we call woody tv where they could just come in like a wood cabinet any of those old tvs that are literally worth nothing you can put a tank inside and, and make yourself a really nice aquarium and they'll go for a crazy amount of money. The most is I had a buddy. He took one of those giant wood frames, put a tank in it, and he sold it for $1,500. Wow. 
and that was just an easy drop tank setup. It was nice flush in the front. It wasn't even a, like bowed glass. It was just easy peasy. And one of the coolest things I saw uh, recently, I was on um, on YouTube just looking at, at tanks and stuff, and there is a garden in Japan, and they've taken all these different crazy tanks and put them in the garden. So you walk through the garden at night, and these tanks are lit up with the most beautiful fish. But they had a old phone booth. And anyway, they completely sealed the phone booth and left the phone in there, and they had fish in there. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's a Japanese garden. These people have done extremely, you know, hard hard work on this stuff and it's absolutely beautiful but it's just cool to see something out of the ordinary well what i'd like to do in the aquarium guys podcast is give you guys uh something that you can easily obtain for a fun idea now we can talk about spongebob we talked about mario bros i've seen talked to some people that they do like legos or bionicles um instead what i'd like to recommend is something much simpler and you might be able to offend your family with this for you know thanksgiving or christmas coming up and what you got to do Go on Amazon.com and just type in yourself, uh, was it crystal blue, uh, crystal blue gravel, and or just blue gravel. You'll you'll see that there's clearer stuff that you can use, and they have these in the five pound bags. And essentially, it's either plastic or glass. The glass is much better. Um, be careful some of the edges, and it looks like your entire bottom of your tank is just these little broken glass blue pieces, right? And then. What you need to do is there was a mistake. Walmart decides uh, that, hey, this cool show called Breaking Bad is really popular on AMC. We should do a toy line of Breaking Bad. Now, for those of you who haven't listened to, Breaking Bad is a uh, very uh, critically acclaimed series that focuses on a science teacher getting cancer and having to try to make enough money creating meth or his family before he passes it's a gripping show definitely not uh not for children but uh the whole idea is and science teacher makes meth and he makes blue meth so walmart decides we want an action figure for children they get all these action figures in and send them across all the walmarts parents riot across the united states they immediately send all of the toys back so now why wow, that's like their core audience Exactly. <laughs> so all of these uh, toy warehouses didn't know what to do with them, so they just peddled them to third parties. So you can still find Breaking Bad action figures on Amazon. And they have Heisenberg, Jesse, and they have them in their lab coats holding trays of meth or buckets of meth. So have yourself a crystal blue bottom, get yourself your favorite figurine, and check the figurines because now they've had remakes. So make sure that it's safe for children and uh, that it's not going to leach paint or any other chemical from the toy into the tank. But that would be a hilarious tope I've seen people do. And you can do yourself. Well, even if these things leach into the tank, how about you just put the damn thing in that hamster cage where it's dry? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, honestly, it, it created like a side little uh, cult thing. Now they have like Funko Pops that make you look like the characters from Breaking Bad. They got all kinds of crazy Those shit. Those are very popular Funko Pops. I just thought of why why the parents at Walmart were pissed. Why they is that? They didn't it? want the kids to realize that they were doing meth. That's for when they get older. Because <laughs> that that is old. correct. We did not do that. I don't know if, if you know, but you're probably all very excited that, that Barbie now has come out with a Elton John barbie so uh, you know, i would believe in elton oh. john before i'd believe in a real barbie yeah no elton john they make an elton john barbie now and 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 this is an actual fact here and i bought them a couple of years ago barbie came out with 007 characters for barbie and i owned the one that's that was called pussy galore and i'm not making that up you can go online and see them so there's a 007 barbie doll named pussy galore from 007 from the 60s and there's also one other one that, that's a little iffy too i can't remember the name of it real quick but octopussy no. that was the one with the blue ring octopus <laughs> yeah look it up they're still selling them on ebay and stuff uh the, the last time i saw a pussy galore doll i was going for like 95 dollars, and i actually bought one just because it was hilarious and walmart was selling it merry christmas to jim they, they have a video on here for you spiritual put it on here for you that night uh, what is that? Video? It's it's a uh, it's about a catfish. Oh, the gulping catfish. 
Yeah. So that, that's been a viral video for a long time. The well, gulping cat bring back memories of, you know, your arowana. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss my ass. No, the gulping cat fish yourself. is known for eating two to three times its size in fish. Like, there's a popular video of a medium-sized gulper catfish eating a koi that's clearly two and a half times its size. And it's, they'll, uh, they'll swallow your fist. Like, yeah, while you're just... Thanks. That's amazing. Do not be fisting with your fish. They're pretty incredible. <laughs> Don't fist your fish. Do you guys got any other last minute uh, <laughs> worthwhile notes for some of these uh, crazy ideas? I love he says worthwhile. Um, well, I had um, I had one tank that might have been worse than the lamprey one. Let's hear um, it. So, I mean, so the Department of Ichthyology works cross with the Department of Entomology. Bugs are disgusting. We all hate bugs. They're terrible. I cannot express how much I hate insects. But I had to set up a tank for, you know, those toe biters? You've probably seen them. They're in American lakes, ponds, four-ish inches long. They eat fish. They got these big, long claws and a long proboscis. They're these disgusting creatures. I've known them as uh, called giant water bugs. We have a few yeah. of them in Minnesota, actually. Yeah, so I set up a tank for them. So <laughs> it was... Why? <laughs> Imagine it looked like a giant cockroach. With like demon fangs in the front. Yeah, this was we the the whole name of the display was um, Canadian River creatures. So we had to do a bunch of Canadian River creatures, and of course they leave me with the um, they leave me with the toe biters. So it was a it was a twenty long, and I put like four of these things in there, and we we were feeding them goldfish because that's what we were told to. Even though I feel like yeah. it's probably not a good good for the insect but i also don't care if they live or die so i thought you were gonna say you honestly them. with these things they, they catch minnows in their natural environment and that, that's what they're kind of hunting for anything that they can grab that's small enough i thought he was gonna say they fed them toes i used to catch these things as a kid yeah they did you put them in your shit jars too robs yeah no I, the sun. I did not that Picture. would be inhumane but i um so this this tank was very lightly planted it was just some gravel and a few fake plants and stuff because, you know, all the kids are going to come and see it. And you want to make sure they can see it and they don't see, like, you know, just, like, some beautiful, well scaped tank. They just want to see the whatever's in it. So that meant when I had to clean it, every time I'd clean it, those toe biters would see me. And those toe biters will come for you. <laughs> and so I was cleaning the tank once. And it's disgusting because they tear apart these goldfish and it's just gross and you don't want to have to clean that up and so while i'm cleaning um one of my bosses the and the curator of entomology and one of the museum directors was walking through because we it was after closing hours so they do a quick walk through to make sure nothing's out of place or anything right when they're behind me one of them says hi to me so i go over and say hi to them and then they're striking up a little conversation with me while i'm doing that one of those toe biters bites my hand and <laughs> It hurt bad, and the first thing I yell as loud as I can, I'm should be noted I'm an of Irish descent, and sometimes the words we say when we're in pain are not good words. Oh, no. So, um, so I very very loudly said a word that rhymes with runt. <laughs> um, hey, we've had uh, a couple British people on here. They like that word. Yeah, uh, the the uh, director of the museum doesn't like that word. I've learned. Um, so uh, I didn't get in trouble or anything, but it was um, probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. That is that is the story of how your boy Oscar almost got fired because he made a bug tope for work. Yeah, I I got paid for this. Is the only good thing to come out of it. There's some crazy pictures in chat. Even going further into that, like uh, a toe biter killing a turtle. Yeah, poor little baby turtle. Like they're they're crazy things, and when they bite, it feels like it like a sting. It's not just they're biting; they're it's pretty sharp shit. Like it's not fun. Yeah, I, I swell up from them real bad. Do they have venom? I don't know what they have, but I know it's I I must be allergic to whatever's there because they they give me like a an egg wherever they. They bite. must have a venom. I bet. Uh, I believe they have a, a venomous saliva that they inject in to kind of digest and then pull those innards out. But they're. When they bite, they hurt. Like it hurts bad. <laughs> it's and it hurts for a while. They're they're super aggressive. Is the strange thing because they'll go after like in the in the chat. Someone posted a turtle. They'll go after t turtles, like mice, anything that they can get their hands on. So if you have a tank with them and you have your hand in there, they'll go for your hand without a shadow of a doubt. And they are 
fast. They're deceptively fast. And they're big. These are the th- these are the things that the Charis from Skyrim is based on. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't think we can get much uh, much more haunting than what we've talked about. Sea lampreys, toe biters, my ex wife, uh, hamsters, uh, <laughs> hamsters playing Atlantis. So before we leave, I just want to remind you: this was a fun episode. Do not take any of this advice to heart. Before you put any object in your tank, do research on what that material is made out of, whether what type of plastic, what chemicals are sprayed on it, what paint is in it, and do your homework before putting it in. If you want real advice, you could message us uh, for all these different examples. You know, you got the guy that was sealing his uh, his wood. Don't do that. Do your homework before you put any object in the tank. And if you ever want to make a taupe, have fun, but also always look out for the fish's needs. As long as you're meeting their needs, you can certainly have some fun creativity and uh, get into the hobby. But uh, meet your fish's needs first and then have some fun. And if you have any interesting tanks out there uh, already, go ahead and send us those pictures and we'll put them on our Discord page and uh, Facebook. And uh, maybe even Rob will get a tattoo on his ass of that. (laughs) We also have the Cobalt and Reflowers contest that we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. So certainly go, uh, and it's in the show notes, sign up. We're doing an Aquascape contest, and uh, Cobalt and Reflowers are giving away three separate prizes. Look at those. They're fantastic uh, prizes and bundles. And, you know, either freshwater or saltwater, um, both are accepted for the contest. But we're also doing a separate one aside that us uh, so the aquarium guys are doing at the same, uh, same form for Funniest Taupe. That's safe for fish. If you have something like a hamster in your aquarium, we're going to disqualify you because that's cruelty. But if you have something that you is safe for the uh, fish that you uh, have as a fun taupe, send it in. We we like comedy taupes. We'll get you get you a prize for that. I don't too. know if we're going to disqualify for the hamsters. But... I'm disqualifying for the hamster. That's you know I, I'm not going to go there, but I'm definitely going to contact that guy. So if you have a mouse or a rat, go ahead and do that. But hamsters, no. <laughs> oh no, none of none of the above. If you're going to right. kill them, just put them on CO2. <laughs> and introduce them to your friend, Mr. Snake. Well, exactly. a, a big thank you to all members from uh, TCT. It was a pleasure having you It was on. a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so I much. I mean, even the uh, theoretical topes, uh, one of my favorite bits of all time. Thank you for that. Um, Actually, so, uh, if, can I steal one minute before we go? Absolutely. You can have all you want. So I have been chastised in the other server specifically because apparently I do make topes and I just don't realize because I'm uh, don't bother remembering anything. The maze tope. So oh. I was building stuff out of acrylic for boredom and I built a, a system that was four feet wide by eight inches front to back by 24 inches tall. And the idea was to just kind of put it up against the wall and have a, a very vertical, very, very vertical uh, system. And the acrylic I used wasn't tall enough or rather thick enough to support the, the weight of the water. So it started bowing. So I started putting panels inside of it and kind of gluing it all together. And what it ended up becoming is uh, a three-dimensional maze for the fish to swim to to try to get to the top to get food. So that was my big one is the, uh, is the maze taupe, which ended up having cherry shrimp, uh, a whole crap ton of endlers, and a newt that we found dried up in a in the corner of a local fish store, and I ended up rehydrating it. And it comes back to life, and, and that was that was the entire system. Was that the prize? Uh, yeah. The newt? No, it was, it was just uh, there was this girl at the front. I forgot her name, but I always called her Jennifer. It wasn't her name, but that's what I called her. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and she just goes like, "Hey, there's this thing. Do you want it?" And I looked at it. and It was just like this old dusty newt, and I was like, "What is it?" And she goes, "I don't know." Then so I put water on it. And sure enough, it starts moving again and scared me. So I put it in the fish tank and it was an, uh, an albino ribbed newt that lived in a maze up against my wall. You made a saw trap for endlers. Did I? I think you did. Well, I wouldn't say it's saw trap. It's, it's not killing them. They're just, it's just enriching their lives to try to find food, more ways to hunt than. Um, yeah, the saw, Jake saw never killed anyone. That's true. <laughs> they say it every movie. Okay, very uh, true. one more spin off of that. There's also a couple other ideas uh, for <laughs> fish enrichment. And they have these, what we'll call it a tope. And what they do is they take like uh, Aranda goldfish, Aranchu goldfish, and they put them in this uh, certain tank and they drop a plastic soccer ball in. And if goldfish move the soccer ball into either goal on either side, they get fed. 
So they're essentially training them to play soccer, and it's a crazy fun experience. There's no objects in the, the tank to cut them. It's completely safe how they have it set up. They made a custom tank for it. It's a nice, large space, large soccer field, and they train their fish to play soccer. So, again, as long as your fish's needs are met and you're not putting newts with your endlers to get eaten, <laughs> certainly uh, have them fun. Find ways to enrich your fish, but uh, do your homework. Have you ever seen her? Are, oh, I was saying you are what? vastly overestimating the abilities of a newt. Yeah, they might be able to clip one though. You you never know, and there's also different types of newts. This one is a rib newt for your pleasure. <laughs> That's what he said. That is what I said. Yeah. Have you ever been to like a really bad fair? Not that there's any good fairs, but we were at a fair one time, and they had a chicken. That would tell you your 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 future, and you put your quarter in, and then it would drop some some like corn or something in there, and then he would peck at at the food, and then it would show your future up there like he was typing. And they can't type for shit. I'll tell you that much. Chickens cannot type. So that's what you're saying is you did that, and it said that you're going to be one day in an aquarium podcast. No, it, it, here's what it said. It went like X O O O, you know, all these different jibber jabber stuff. And then at the end, it popped up like a real, you know, a real thing. Like, like now they've, that was chicken language. Oh, and they translated they it. They translated it. And then it says like, you know, you, you will grow very old and wise. Something like that. I saw that at State Fair one time. All right. I'm cutting Jimmy off beer. Guys, if uh, you like the podcast, certainly go to AquariumBestPodcast.com. On the website, you can find a way to support us. You can buy merch from our store. You can... Just to support us directly through the link on the bottom by donating one time monthly helps keep the lights on. And above all else, always check out our sponsors. Uh, TCT, thank you for coming on. Go to the aquarium, excuse me, the community tank.com. Check out their podcast, join their Discord. They're, uh, they're fun people. So sure. On behalf of all of us, us, thank you for having us on. Great talking to you guys. Huge fans of the podcast. All right. Well, it was fun to have you and, uh, and be assured that we. Now off to Google more hamster adventures <laughs> until next week. Thanks guys for listening to the podcast. Please go to your favorite place where podcasts are found, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever they can be found, like subscribe and make sure you get push notifications directly to your phone. So you don't miss great content like this. I never knew that a Minnesota accent could be so sexy until I heard Adam's voice. Go fuck yourself, don't you know? <laughs> That's my boy, don't you know.